So uh, good afternoon, everyone. And um, thanks for, for being here. I'd like to first say thanks to Uba. It's a new way of putting that I've heard today. Uh, thanks to Bobby for putting this on and really appreciate the time to, to speak with you all today. Um, I think uh, three years ago, if you would have asked me that I'd be standing in front of a room of, of strategic thinkers for engineering uh, within the utility space, I would have probably thought you were crazy. Um, but you know, one of the interesting um, positions that a mobile carrier finds themselves in is we're constantly changing and evolving and the marketplace has changed and um, technology changes, frankly. And so one of the, the kind of philosophies I've always lived by that's helped me in this industry is something that Wayne Dyer talks about. You have to always change the way you look at things if you want the things you look at to change. And so what I'd like to talk to you guys about today are some some ideas of different types of approaches that you uh, that mobile carriers can provide to utilities and frankly any industry um, to help with a private network strategy. One thing we found really fast, and this isn't just agnostic to uh, different verticals, whether you're thinking industry 4.0 or you're thinking utilities, it's also different from organization to organization. You know, when you're thinking about building out an entire network, you're, you're, you have a lot of things to think about there. You know, no two states are gonna have the same geography, topography, et cetera. So to jump into it, what I'd like to do is first, I'm gonna bore you the guys with a little bit of the value proposition. Why do um, uh, utilities think about these types of solutions? The next thing I'm going to cover is going to be something a little bit more uh, important in my, in my opinion, which are the different types of um, architectural structures that we can use to support a private cellular network. And the idea is the ambiguity of these architectures should really tie towards the ambiguity of those um, strategic plans for a private cellular network. Uh, and then lastly, like, how does all this stuff actually work? So I'm going to preface and tell you guys I'm more on the business development side. I'm not an engineer, but that said, um, we brought a lot of engineer support for US Cellular here. So if you guys have any questions of how all this stuff actually operates, we'll be happy to take those questions um, after this spiel um, in, our, in our table or booth. So as far as private networks, I think we all kind of understand this part. We know why it's important. First and foremost, when you think about utility operated or, or utility owned network, the, the most important point there is you don't want to be in a position where an external entity is telling you how you need to strategize technology. You don't want to be told, you know, there's a network sunsetting or shift of spectrum, something that could force you to now have to go outside of what your comfort zone is or outside of your, you know, your plans for the technology itself. Uh, another really big and important piece here is going to be the capabilities that you get out of a private network. I think one of the hot items that was talked about besides the digital divide in the cellular world for the last few years has also been the importance of priority and preemption of um, those cellular services. Think about that same concept, but you know, when you build your own network from the ground up, essentially what you're doing is you're becoming priority number one. You know, your network is going to prioritize your solutions that are actually on that network over anything else. You have full control and ambiguity of how those connections are, are going to be looked at. So there's different ways to look at this. And I know this is kind of a busy slide, but bear with me. I'm gonna kind of quit in Tarantino this thing, start from the bottom up, start from the end and kind of work my way towards the beginning. And this in a nutshell has been really learned from our conversations with various organizations that are thinking about this, specifically in the utility space. So, I'll start high and we'll start getting into some more granular uh, points here in just a minute. But first, you let's say your, your strategy is I want to build, own, and operate my own RAN. I'd like to completely own and operate my own core. That's in our plan. That's in our budgets. We're ready to do it. We're going to operationalize it. That's something a carrier can absolutely support. I made the comment in the beginning. No two states are going to have the same topography. So you might be in a situation where RAN is a much more complex um, hurdle. There's a lot more that goes into the plan, and the implementation of that type of solution. But, you know, the idea of owning and operating the data traffic on the core is something that attracts you and you're ready to operationalize right out of the gate. So we call that uh, here is our UVNO uh, type of solution, which is utility virtual network operator. Next would be more of a hybrid model. So think about the idea of, hey, I'm not ready to 
hire three to six core engineers. I'm not exactly ready to start deploying a RAN, but I do need access to that local data. I need access to the control plane and I need it in our premises. That's something that can be supported as well. And then, you know, if, if you're with a utility today and, and you have solutions already deployed with a carrier, then I'm sure you're familiar with the idea of doing a VPN type security solution, which would be something like setting up a GRE over IPsec tunnel with that carrier to make sure that your data traffic is, is in a private. So what are some of the key characteristics of each of these different models? Um, you know, when you're thinking about a fully owned and operated network where you, you know, have your own RAN, you have your own core, everything stood up and operationalized, where does the carrier fit there? You know, one of the things we think about it's really important is that you have, you know, your utility grade network well, for the last 30 years, the, the carriers created a carrier grade network. And what that means for you is, let's say you're new to the, to the you know, network environment, you're building this thing up, you're ready to implement it. You can't be put in a position when that network goes down that connectivity completely ends. So the carriers should see themselves as backup, as I mean, we're seeing it in PlugFest today in real time. Uh, the carrier should seamlessly be able to keep that network going should your native network go down. Now, the benefits are you know, easily understood from that perspective, but the costs are huge. You need a lot of money to invest, a lot of capital to invest into that, and it's gonna take time. It's not gonna be something that can be done overnight. On the MVNO model, or the UVNO model, um, you know, as I mentioned, a lot less complexity on the RAN side, so plans can be um, definitely streamlined from that perspective. The thing I wanna call out here is you're looking at the lower upfront cost for all of the equipment and the training that you would need to do for staffing. Um, but you're also looking at uh, the idea of, you know, your, your operational costs are still going to be really high to stay connected. So the point is, uh, if, if it's not your owned and operated RAN and all your data is going through the carrier, you, your operational expenses aren't going to really be mitigated. So that's really important to call out. The idea of deploying that RAN over time will eventually get you to that place where you're shifting that operational expense more into more like more of a capital expense. So within the hybrid network, this one's been really interesting. It's definitely interesting for us outside of the utility vertical. And I've, I've actually seen some utilities really, really interested in the idea of this. So the idea of having access and control over that user plane uh, on premises uh, gives you the capabilities that most folks are looking for, and it gives you the control of the data from end to end. Um, very important, obviously, but the, the key here is there's really a low upfront investment that's going to be necessary for that. And to actually it, deploy it, the, the cost is minimal, like pennies on the dollar. So, you know, I see a lot of folks thinking about this type of application first and then eventually growing to those more complex solutions that I've mentioned in the, in the prior two slides. And again, this is a, a solution that we, we just felt like it was important that you understood that we support it, but you know, it's a solution that most folks uh, realize today if you're currently using utilities uh, applications with cellular. The thing I wanna kind of leave you guys with that I think is really important, and this is more of a US cellular position. Our uh, CEO was speaking at CTIA uh, just last month and he made this comment, I love it. It's important to take a locally guided approach to these types of solutions. And what that means is, again, no two utilities are gonna have the exact same solution plan. So what's important is that you have that carrier helping you customize and think about what that solution should look like for you in the long term. So that could be you start off in the, you know, the, the cloud-based or the VPN-based um, solution, and then you gradually grow to that hybrid model that I mentioned. Uh, maybe you're, you have more assets already deployed to make the RAN deployment a little bit easier and faster. So if that's the case, then that carrier helps you integrate and build out the RAN system. And then maybe the core comes later or, or it's vice versa and that's okay. So the important thing that I want you guys to take away from this discussion is that because the plans are very ambiguous, you need the partner or the carrier that you're working with to have the capability to be ambiguous with your plans. So what I'm getting at here is that at the end of the day, technology should not curve your strategy. Your strategy should be complemented with that technology. So with that in mind, um, well, I guess, it's both of us, isn't it, Dave? So with that in mind, it looks like Dave and I are on the slide here. Our team is running the private cellular network uh, team at US Cellular. 
So if you guys do have any questions, you want to dig into anything as far as like how these architectures can actually be deployed, what integration looks like, feel free to reach out to us. We'd be happy to, to answer any questions. I think I probably have some time, Bobby, if you're around. I don't know. If... Oh, okay. I, so I have some time if you guys do have any questions for me at a high level. So any questions? Bruce, I know you got something. No? Okay. He's keeping it to himself. All right. Simple enough. Thanks, guys.